Good afternoon. My name is Joe Cashwell with Rotocraft RC. Normally we're here to talk about charge cases. This is a charging system, it's just not in a case. Now Trent Palmer with Copter Kids always loves challenging us. Matter of fact, some of our biggest advances have come from the pro video guys and people like Trent. Hey guys, Trent with Copter Kids. Wanted to quickly talk about charging setups and some uh, recent updates we've had and done. Uh, basically, this is our standard charging box from Rotorcraft RC. They build a really nice box because it has everything you could need inside of it. We previously used to build our own boxes, but once they started doing them better, uh, we went that route. Um, the beauty of this thing, super compact, fits all our cables in. We can charge four sets down here, two additional sets if we'd like on the lid, and two sets of Movi Pro batteries. Um, the only downside is, when we're shooting something like a car commercial, we're moving location to location, we end up doing a lot of pulling the generator out, opening the box, plugging everything in, start charging, and then right after we start charging, which takes about five minutes, uh, either the director or assistant director says, all right, we're moving, next location which brought us to the next thing. How to get onboard charging on the truck that we can actually charge while we're moving. Now the hard part is, I knew that I couldn't just charge up a car battery. Anyone that's been around these drones know that they have such a high output that I would drain a car battery in you know, less than one charge for our big packs. So it needed to be something that ran off the alternator. So what I've done is basically, I have added what's called a Lear Locker in the truck. So this is built by Lear to go in the camper shell, fits flush up against the top, can hold 120 pounds. Had my friends at Rotorcraft, mainly Joe, um, design me and build me the charging apparatus, which has four iCharger 406 duos, or sorry, two, gives us four battery outputs, which all can be latched down for secure, uh, or secured down for driving. Got two Movi Pro chargers, a uh, V-Lock charger, and a 2000 watt power inverter that gives us our uh, AC out in the back as well as the front. So I have some to, to run in the storage bay as well as some for exterior. And basically this whole thing's ran off of a 300 amp relay, which is on this switch, which turns the power on to the master. Uh, I got AC power here, which powers up the inverter, both Movi Pro chargers and the V-Lock. I got USB power, which charges the four USB outs. I've got charge area lighting as well as lighting for both storage areas. And wiring this on its own was quite the ordeal. Basically, it's, uh, we're running a 370 amp alternator with a zero gauge wire into a 250 amp breaker that I can shut off if anyone's working on the truck. That comes back into a breakout, uh, or, sorry, uh, yeah, a distribution block running in dual four gauge. And if you look over here, basically what we've got is a cable chain or a cable carrier and that's why I had to go from zero gauge to four, and that's what allows it to go in and out without binding, which is pretty cool. So overall, it can handle charging. The, the truck at idle burns 0.33 gallons an hour, so about a third of a gallon an hour. I can idle for three hours on one gallon. That's just as efficient as a 2,000 watt generator, which is perfect, and again, we can get it going. Turn, turn everything on, everything's up and running, put it away, store it while it's going, and drive away. And one little last thing I added, I added uh, lights for the interior as well as the work area. So we've got work lights, which basically when you're out here, it lights it up like daylight, you can see everything you're working on. Obviously with the bed slide, your whole workstation is completely out. Work like a gentleman instead of getting on the ground working on things. Last little thing, of course, you got onboard air if you want to blow off lenses, any of that stuff. So, our uh, copter support vehicle, CSV, has turned into a pretty comfortable and versatile uh, truck. Thanks for the video, Trent. It was great being able to see this thing installed, and the detail that your camera and that you gave me is, is definitely going to help on the next build. I know we both learned a lot about assembling this and installing it and what changes we would make next time, but 
I mean, even though that was the first one, man, that thing came out really nice. And your wiring job and your installation was stellar. Good job. Makes me look that much better. Thanks a lot, man. Well, let's see what it takes to go from building charge cases like this to building the CSV, the copter support vehicle, the Trek One. First thing we had to do was design everything before we even started cutting. It was kind of an easy design because it's, it's technically everything that we've done in the case. It's just all the parts to hold everything in place. With a charge case, you have the sides, tops, and bottoms already there. With this, we had to make everything. As soon as I worked through the first couple weekends, Jacob was more than happy to put in his time for cleaning up parts. Boy, he's a little chap. Once everything started going together, it got a lot faster for us. And then once we started welding the parts, it went together just as fast as a normal case. And then Jacob, every time he sees a deck laying around that needs banana jacks, man, he just attacks it. You gotta love that kid. So tenacious. He's gonna be a good builder one day. But I almost feel like being at the shop with dad is awesome. And then when he gets older and he has to be at the shop with dad, it's not going to be so awesome. It's going to become work. But for now, I accept his help. So a couple things that we did for attention to detail is the 1000 watt power inverter had this nice rubber handle on top for carrying it. Well I took this whole thing apart and took the handle off. That ended up being a project in its own. Now another design issue that we had to overcome was the way we could secure the lipos in this CSV as he's moving from location to location. So we used a strapping system that's available now, but I also hogged out some holes that way if lipos changed down the road in size or, or dimensions, he'd be able to strap them down using Velcro straps. And because we are using metal hardware, we wanted to keep from having any lipo damage while this thing's in transport. So what we did is we sandwiched the metal hardware in between the two pieces and made it one. And about the time I get all this stuff figured out, Trent gives me a call and says, Joe, you forgot to black out the chargers. <laughs> it's like palm to face. I could not believe I missed this. So I pulled the chargers back out. We did our black ops process to them, reinstalled everything and got it shipped out to them. Man, I'm glad he caught this, because if it would have been all the way out there, I would have been devastated. Because, let me tell you, these chargers look so much better when they're blacked out. Everybody agrees with me on that one.
I want to give a big shout out. Oof. Hope he enjoys it. I hope it does well. I know we both shot a couple ideas or bounced a couple ideas. Oh, boy. <laughs> 